Back in August of 2019, I started using DuckDuckGo as my primary search engine as a replacement for Google. And I'm happy to say that I have stayed with them. So 16 months later, I'm still happy with what I'm getting here. In fact, they have improved a little bit. And it's nowhere near as commercialized as Google was, because this is what drove me away from Google. I was trying to search for a Linux distribution, a very specialized distribution called Tails. Google was showing me results for dog food. Well, at least DuckDuckGo do have one result as being the dog food, but they also have Tails, the operating system in the top right hand side there and in the second place on this one screen. Yeah, Google weren't doing that. And at the time they were becoming more and more commercialized. So it's uh, it's been quite a nice breath of fresh air going with DuckDuckGo. And I've learned a few more things about them since, and this was things I never discussed on my original video when I was talking about the change. So obviously DuckDuckGo have been very much on the focus of privacy. They don't want to collect your information. They don't want to follow you around with the adverts. And yeah, all this thing about being very much anti-tracking. But they're not just talking about the search engine here. Oh no, they've got a little bit more of what they're doing as being anti-tracking. So DuckDuckGo have this tracker radar that searches the internet and exposes tracking domains or tracking websites. And they publish this data onto GitHub and you can use it. And I have used it to create a block list, a DNS block list. So looking at the data here, yeah, I've got the domains and well, this block list says what they're related to, but there is also a different type of uh, list here, the hosts list, which you can use in the slash etc slash host file. So DuckDuckGo are actually against tracking, and this is a complete contrast to Google's model. And of course, Google just absolutely have to make it so annoying to use their search engine. Yeah, if you go across in a private session, I don't know why that's taken a long time to load, but yeah, I'll just mock them even more for not showing the privacy notice quick enough. So yeah, if I don't have cookies enabled, then you have this greeting you every single time. Whatever, Google, just shut up. Performance-wise, yep, DuckDuckGo is perfectly fine. Get results quick enough. Are the quality of results good enough? Varies. Where I would say they're let down is the shopping side. Yeah. Let's just say I'm searching for that CPU. Not exactly a whole lot of results there. Come on, DuckDuckGo. You can do better than that. If I'm searching on Google, yeah, then sorry to say that is more of a win. But yeah, just about everything else was not a shopping search for me. It's a lot better. And at least they're focusing more on being the region specific now, because uh, back when I started using them, it wasn't region specific. You had to keep ticking. Well, for me, I had to keep ticking that United Kingdom. Did lead me to find some humorous ways around, well, let's say, trying to search for the Daily Mail. Oh, it's only worth reading for the comments. It's an absolute garbage rag of a newspaper. But yeah, instead of searching for Daily Mail, I would search for Daily Fail, because in the non-region specific version of the searches, it would actually take me to the UK results. Without doing that, I would end up in the United States version of the results. So a bit of a humorous work around there, which actually I no longer have to do because searching for the Daily Fail now, I mean the Daily Mail now, it uh, brings up the UK result. But anyway, there's more things than searching. The answers section was really useful. I don't know why I didn't really notice this before, but um, I was searching for uh, something very specific, JS Beautifier. And then I was a bit surprised to see this section here. JavaScript Beautifier, enter code below and then click the button Beautify. So using some of the JavaScript on DuckDuckGo's own page, I can beautify it. And yeah, get a result there. And I can put it into a text editor and do something with it. That was a definite plus for me because working in cybersecurity, I have to deal with some pretty much unreadable web code. So yeah, having the JavaScript beautifier right there instead of having to go off to well, this other site which I've been using for too many years now. Other than that, you have the similar sort of conversion thing that Google has, so that's very useful. Uh, one hogshead is 
209 quarts. I mean, who knows what that is? Well, you might do if you frequent a pub too many times, but uh, 10 miles in kilometers, they are something more useful. As it turns out, there's a whole load more of these like instant answer things than I actually expected. Honestly, I just didn't think of searching for a lot of these things. There's an interactive game there, 2048. I don't actually know how to play that one though, but uh, otherwise got uh, things like cheat sheets or Arch Linux cheat sheets, definite for your Arch Linux users, normal Linux cheat sheet. And you can actually just type these in as a search. You don't have to go through the answer section, but it was just useful to, to show this list of features, really. The search engine doesn't have to be just a search engine. It can be more than that. And this sort of thing is a useful feature. And I suppose you could say the search engine is your door to the wider world of the internet. And if you can actually get the answers there and then that you want from the search engine, then why not? It saves me actually having to look around at other things. So I'm actually perfectly happy still using DuckDuckGo as a primary search engine. Now I know the irony of posting this video onto YouTube and honestly, YouTube are really annoying me this year. The censorship is getting absolutely insidious and beyond a joke. Do you know there's actually a certain free open source application I'm no longer allowed to mention because all the videos got removed from my channel. I had a whole playlist on this particular application and that was annoying to have them all removed. So I, I just, it's doing my head in, but I don't just post videos on YouTube. I also post in other places. And here is this other place where I happen to post videos. There's been quite a change posting here. I know I don't get the same view count I do across on YouTube, but it, for some reason I seem to have gained more subscribers on here in the course of one month than YouTube. So <laughs> shows just a, uh, what's happening with the algorithm and censorship. Anyway, as I said, I know the irony of talking about this on YouTube in using Google's products, but quite frankly, the uh, less of Google's products I use, the better. The happier I'm with that. Oh, and one final point to say, because I meant to mention it earlier in the video, that not using Google for the searching really does mess with the stories feature on Android. They have no idea what I'm interested in now, and they keep just stabbing at things I used to search for. It's kind of stuck with Raspberry Pi and the local news for me. Oh well, can't complain there. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.